Very well, it's significant because it now means that all prisoners have been released, as you say, uh, and that will be welcomed by many of those families involved. We think up to 200 people have crossed sides between the two. And it shows that President Putin and President Zelensky, when they met and they said they were going to try and make some progress towards reconciliation, now we have a, a tangible thing that's happened. Today we had those pictures of men and women coming off buses. Uh, these were ordinary civilians who say they were swept up in the conflict, arrested and put in prison for years just for visiting their families. So for them at least, and the people who live in the areas around, today was a milestone. Prisoners who've been held for years, now all released as the Ukraine conflict edges another step towards its end. There are now no captives on either side after a five-year conflict that has claimed more than 10,000 lives. It began after a revolution in Kiev brought in a pro-EU government, prompting Russian-backed separatists to take control of the pro-Russian eastern part of the country. Five years on, there are still major issues to resolve. Ukraine wants control of its border, it says, to stop Russians pouring through. But Mr. Putin says he fears residents of separatist areas would be massacred. The Ukrainian side keeps insisting, give our troops the opportunity to close the border. But I understand what would happen next. There would be Shrebenitsa. That is it. So the prisoner swap remains just a small step. So Dan, despite the prisoner swap, there hasn't been much movement on the other big issues. No, exactly. Uh, as I mentioned in my report, uh, you have the border issue. Ukraine uh, wants sovereignty and control over its border, saying that there are Russian, Russian-backed separatists going through that porous border. There's also the issue of the level of autonomy of these regions, because uh, as part of the Minsk Accords, they're allowed some level of autonomy. There's a disagreement over how much and how that will unfold, and the protection allowed to people who were caught up in the conflict. And then you have the whole issue of demilitarization. Russia saying that its forces and its people aren't in the area. Ukraine saying, well, these separatists are backed by Russia. So on some of the very key points, the two sides disagree. The strange thing here is that we actually have the Minsk Accords, uh, which set out a pathway uh, for stabilization, if you like. But it's all about the how that is executed, when it happens, in what order, and whether Ukraine and Russia think each side is acting in good faith. Because Ukraine thinks that President Putin uh, often doesn't act in good faith, is just looking out for Russia's interests. So there has been some skepticism and pressure on Zelensky not to give too much to President Putin. But now we have this prisoner swap. It does seem like there's some progress, and people will, be, will now be looking to see if they can turn that into some substantive work on the bigger issues. All right, CGTN's Dan Ashby live there in Moscow for us. A missile strike targeting a military parade in southern Yemen has killed at least five people, officials blaming Houthi militants for that. It happened at a graduation ceremony for recruits backed by the United Arab Emirates in the fight against the Houthis.